Our first um, director's dialogue. Uh, this is, um, we're also doing uh, talks with, extended talks with a few other filmmakers in the festival. Later tonight in the space, we have Errol Morris. Uh, we also have um, Alice Rohrbacher and Alfonso Cuaron, the second weekend of the festival. And these are all free talks, as you know. Um, so I am very pleased to have with us um, tonight the director of one of the films in the main slate, Ash is Pure as White. Uh, it screens tomorrow um, in Alice Tully Hall and again on October 10th. Um, special thank you to HBO, presenting partner of the director's dialogue and of our year-round talks, um, and also to Illy, our supporting partner. So um, without further ado, I'm very pleased to bring out one of the great filmmakers of our time, Jajanka. Thank you. And we have uh, Vincent Cheng, who will help us with translation. So um, I think because of your very busy schedule, we usually do these talks after the screening, but we had to do yours before. Um, so has anybody in the audience actually seen Ash is Pure as White? Yeah, a few people have. Not many. So we won't, uh, no spoilers. We won't uh, say too much about the film. Um, but we, I would just start by maybe, you know, ask, Talking a little bit about this film, um, pr preparing people who will see it tomorrow. This is your 12th feature film, I think. I hope I counted correctly. Uh, <laughs> it could be. I didn't really count and keep track enough. of it. <laughs> um, and we've shown, I think, almost all of your films. Uh, here at the New York Film Festival. Um, this is a film that, um, like your previous film, Mountains May Depart, and like one of your early films, Platform, is a film that spans a long period of time. Um, and I'm wondering, you know, this is one way to kind of divide your films. It's the films that I think are very immediate, very much about the present and what is happening in China today, and films that are looking back in the case of Mountains Made Apart, also forward, but taking like a larger time span into consideration. Um, and I'm wondering if you approach the films differently when you're looking into the past. Jiangu 首先要谢谢这个林肯中心 So thank you uh, in terms of the New York Film Festival to invite me to come back again after three years. The last time I was here was three years ago. And uh, it's hard to get, um, get comfortable here just because uh, for the past 10 days I have been trying to deal with the major release in China. And right now it's uh, showing in theaters around the country in China. So it's been almost like uh, uh, wartime for me for the past 10 days. Uh, 我第一次拍比较时间比较长度大的电影是二十九岁的时候拍站台那个电影是从一九七九年拍到一九八九年呃那时候想拍这么长的时间我觉得是因为呃八十年代就是对我来说突然觉得它过去了呃就是那时候八
，我的电影一直是呃很少有这种大的时间跨度，因为都是此时此刻对中对生活的一种理解呃认识，就很快速的拍出来。So、uh, when I made platform,、uh, I was twenty nine. And the film is actually trying to capture what happened from 1979 to 1989. So I think that the reason why I did it at that time with this particular film is because,、uh, if you're looking back on the 1980s, it is an, an era of restless youth,、uh, first time experiencing this new、uh, reformed society with access to modernity, with outside. Uh, uh, Outside thinking and outside resources, and they just want to be free and be modern. So I do think that that's particularly a very interesting era、uh, in the Chinese history, and that is the reason why I really have the desire to capture that ten years of transformation as a society and also the people、uh, living in that particular environment. And I think after that film,、uh, most of the films that I have afterward,、uh, they are mostly.、Uh, Focusing on the here and now and what's happening,、uh, the state of nation, so to speak,、uh, films. So I think that's a, a very big difference in terms of the、uh, in terms of platform and the rest of the film afterwards. So in, uh, in the stage, there is a long time to cross the border. But what I'm interested in is the time period, the 80s and the 1990s, and the time of people's lives. And when they get to the last film, the Shanghai Residents, it's a time when they get to the last film, the Shanghai Residents. 呃，呃，我觉得是有两个原因，一个原因是因为我四十多岁了，那时候四十四岁拍的那个电影，然后那个时候我觉得，呃，人生已经经经历了一段时间，就看到很多过去没有，就是，呃，没有体验过的生活，你必须经历的事情，呃，比如说，呃，结婚、生子，啊、呃，像这个生老病死这些。功课，我觉得青春的时候对这些是没有没有什么太多的认识的。但是四十多岁你开始经历这些的时候，我觉得好像我们每个人的人生是有有一个统一的剧本一样，我们必然每个人都会或多或少去演那个角色，那些情节其实都已经设置好的。呃，那我想谈一个人怎么样在一个长的时间里要面临。面面临必然面临的一些问题，所以写了一个比较长的时间的故事。So,、uh, mountains may depart, and that was in 2015, and I was 44. No longer someone who was in his 20s. I went. I was in my 40s. So,、uh, because I have experienced a lot during these years and have seen the ups and downs and experienced the ups and downs, and also have observed around me. The inevitables in terms of uh, many uh, junctures of、uh, someone's life or anyone's life, birth, aging, illness, death. So I think that it's almost as if that all of us we have this template, this script that we act、uh, in our own lifetime, and we all share the same script somehow. And that's the reason why I really want to somehow use this particular film to capture those inevitable、uh, in. Evitable stages of our lives, and because of my age, at the age of 44, I get to、uh, capture the essence even greater because of my age. 呃，那么到了今年这一次，呃，这个《江湖儿女》呢，呃，我是特别感兴趣讲人怎么被时间改变啊、呃，因为，呃，就是我觉得也，首先也是因为，呃，这个，呃。在生活里面已经经历过一段时间的这样的历练，看看多了所谓命运以后，就是一个个人怎么样在时间的这个这个被时间磨练、被时间改变，是我感兴趣的。呃，过去我我觉得也是开始有一种时间的观点，靠看人、看问题、看事情。呃，理理解人自身啊、呃，容易把它放在一个比较时长的时间里面去观察它。So this long span of temporal elements is continues to be something that I'm very interested in. 
uh, not only because I'm getting older as well, and for the film Ashes Pure as White, I definitely want to use this device of time to really uh, look and observe, look into and observe how time can shape, mold, and change an individual. And uh, the, uh, the time as an element uh, to use that to look at how time change people, change a lot of problems that we are facing, and also a lot of affairs that we're dealing with uh, right now. So I do think that that is the only uh, element in terms of vehicle or device that they can actually somehow uh, examine all these issues uh, and most effectively. Uh, uh, I think uh,从第一部电影九八年的小五到现在这个年轻人开始有了孤独感这个这个这个呃这个就是江湖呃这些都是嗯就是我们每个人身上都有它是我们现代性的另一部分呃我们有现代性的部分也有非现代性的部分呃我非常感兴趣非非现代性的一部分而这部分其实很难讲清楚
呃，中文呃，中文的片名《江湖儿女》啊、呃，这个电影的名字、呃，我第一次听说是，呃，这个词我第词我第一次听说是在零一呃二零零九年我拍纪录片《I Wish I Knew》的时候，因为那个电影是关于上海人的，呃，我去了香港去拍费穆导演《小城之春》的女主角伟伟，伟伟女士跟我讲，费穆导演晚年筹备的最后一个电影的。就是《江湖儿女》，呃，我听了这个中文之后非常激动，呃，我太爱这个词组了。Mm -hmm. So the first time I actually came across this particular phrase "Jianghu Erni," which means the daughters and、uh, the children of Jianghu, is when I was shooting my documentary "I Wish I Knew" in、uh, in 2009, and I went to Hong Kong to interview one of、uh, my interviewees,、uh, who is Wei Wei, and she、uh, was the lead actress in Fei Mu's film "Springtime in a Small Town." And she told me that Feimu, the last film, the unfinished film that he was working on before he passed, was this film called Jianghu Ernu. And when I heard of this particular phrase, it just touched me and moved me a lot. Ah, because Jianghu in Chinese is a non-explanatory word. Actually, no one can explain it clearly. But we all know what it means. As a man, I personally like the Chinese Jianghu film. 呃，就是呃，在我在我小的时候，他大概呃七八岁的时候特别乱，然后我也在有过那样的街头生活，呃，也呃那时候江湖里面的人啊、呃，给我留下很深的印象。我觉得他们非常的有血有肉，我很喜欢这样的人，他们是一些生动的人。So Jianghu as a as a phrase, actually, it's really hard to translate into English or other languages. But for Chinese people, they know exactly what it means when they hear this particular phrase. And as a male person, especially, it really means a lot to me. I remember that、uh, a lot of literatures, a lot of films that I read or I watch in the past, it has this. Particular Jianghu motif, and myself, when I was young, seven or eight years old, I also lived. The street life, so to speak, that、uh, because of my、uh, living situation at the time,、uh, I tend to associate myself with people who are so in the so-called underworld、uh, environment, and they really、uh, impress me a lot. Just the way that they conduct themselves and the way the way they relate to one another. Uh, 可能有的听众会说这个。八九岁你能在江湖上做什么？给大家讲解释一下哈，十八九的孩子在打架的时候，我们八九岁的孩子负责运输砖头石头。<笑> so you might ask, what could you do at the age of eight or nine or seven or eight、uh, in this particular underworld environment? Well, guess what?、Uh, you could be the、uh, the help. To bring bricks, to bring stones, when they are involved in any type of street brawls. When I grew up, I watched a lot of Chinese films. I especially liked the '80s in the street scenes. I especially liked the '80s in the street scenes. I especially liked the '80s in the street scenes. I especially liked the '80s in the street scenes. I especially liked the '80s in the street scenes. So and of course,、uh, I grew up in the era, you know, in 1980s, and then、uh, that's one of the my favorite genres of films, you know, triad films, and、uh, Jiang Fu,、uh, with the Jiang Fu motif. And I will spend a lot of time in the video arcade and watching those films. And I, I also, after I went to the、uh, to to study films, I also realized that how this is such an important motif. For Chinese literature and Chinese Chinese cinema. Uh, I think, regardless of uh, Hu Jinquan director, the film in the film, or Zhang Ce director, the film in the film, or Wu Yuxian director, the film in the film, or Hong Kong in the eighties or nineties, actually, the first of all, the background is the era of violence and change. Uh, that is, uh, this is one aspect. The other aspect is. 它是一个充满了危机、生存危机的世界
，在这个世界里面又有着非常复杂的人际关系，它构成了我们所谓的江湖。So the films such as King Hu's, Wu Xia genre, Zhang Chou's films, or all the way to 70s and 80s, you have films such as Jiang Wu's, Jiang Wu's triad films from Hong Kong and from Taiwan. So I do think that these are films capture the essence of how people survive and how people behave in the eras of great transformation, great. Unrest, and also it is, and these films captures also the the society ridden with crises, with a lot of wars, and also it captures the essence of how complex the human relationships and interpersonal relationship within that particular particular Jianghu context. Uh, actually, uh. 中国文化里所有的江湖的关于江湖的作品，最终都是透过江湖这样一个角度来看主流世界发生的问题、发生的情况。So all of these films, so-called the Jiang, uh, the Jianghu genre, uh, very much is using their perspective uh, on the periphery to look at the mainstream culture. 呃，那么儿女是什么呢？江湖儿女嘛，儿女就是指在江湖里面那些有情有义、有血有肉的人。And the 儿女 ，these two words, of course, is the children living in this particular Jianghu context, and these are the people who dare to love and have faith in royalty and have a lot of human emotions that is very visceral and very raw. 呃，我给他可能这个不太好翻啊，我给大家讲个故事就明白了啊。对，呃 ，sorry， 呃 ，it might not be very easy to translate， but I'm going to give you some examples。你比如说，我们是小时候哈，比如说有一个朋友被欺负了，我们一帮朋友就很气，我们就气他出头，就去打架，没有任何经济关系。然后现在我回了老家，听说。如果两个人发生了这种争执，可以打电话找公司来出兄弟，然后来了两边都叫了兄弟来了，其实是一家公司的，然后他互相推几下就下班回去了，这这这这这，对。So, so when so when I was very young at the time that if you uh experience that let's say your friend was bullied. And what you can do is to actually get around a group of friends or brothers that uh, then we will somehow get back to the, uh, the perpetrator of this particular bullying uh, incident. And we don't even have to be related to each other or by blood or um, just because we are friends or we are from that particular uh, neighborhood, we will actually do this for someone in, in the in-group. Whereas now, well, not whereas. Actually, now you can also see that happening. When I went back to uh, my hometown, I was told that if someone is having problem with another person, this person actually can pick up the phone and call a company to run up all the brothers or all the uh, the muscles to actually uh, rough people up. And then sometimes they will realize that both the victims and the perpetrator of that particular. Uh, conflict, they will hire the same company, and then uh, the people came in will actually just pretty much shuffle and push each other around, and they will call it a day and go home. So, 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 Similar, it's completely different. So that, in a nutshell, is what Ash is pure as white, or Jianghu Er Nu is trying to capture in terms of how this Jianghu concept, this kind of code of honor, codes of um, behaviors or codes of conduct. Have evolved through time from the past till now. Uh, I was in school watching Hong Kong television. At the time, there was always a repeated phrase, "Black society must be unified." 
我当时我确实不明白这个这个台词的分量，但是当我拍这个《江湖儿女》说，我觉得这句台词分量非常重，所以我也用了这句台词。So uh, when I watch the films, uh, the, those Shang, uh, the Hong Kong triad films, I, I, one phrase or the catchphrase that they always use really impressed me and a lot, and I remember the most, is that we need to industrialize or commercialize this idea of underworld or the, the, the dark society or black society. So uh, I, I also use this phrase for my film in this particular uh, uh, in Ashes Pure's Why, just because I think that it's very, very fitting. Uh, so I really like this particular name, Jianghu Ernu, because it really gave a sense of this ancient, traditional, classical sense to it. And uh, when I mentioned that I wanted to this, use this particular title as my film title, a lot of people around me, including those uh, involved in marketing and the, the investors, they tend to think that this is not a good idea just because it really reminds uh, or uh, somehow people have that association that they equate this phrase with the period piece wuxia genre films. And in China right now, that is not the popular genre or the very uh, market-driven genre that to be go uh, to go after. So, um, but I still like this particular title. Uh, 对，然后我们同事说，那你用吧，中文名字。那你能不能改改你的英文名字？因为我的英文名字叫嗯呃 Money and Love。然后，然后。So they sort of, we reached this compromise. It's that, okay, if you really insist on using this particular title for Chinese title, why don't we find something else for the English title rather than just Jiang, the children of Jianghu? And then I said, sure, how about money and love? And then they heard that this particular title, they thought that it is too common and too not sophisticated enough. Actually, I myself really like this kind of outsider feeling. But when I wrote the lyrics, I wrote about that there was a scene where the main character and the lead went to a mountain in front of a mountain to learn how to shoot. 然后那个赵涛演的那个角色，他说：“经过高温燃烧，火山灰可能是最干净的。”我写到这儿，我觉得哦，可可能这个也可以做英文片名吧。嗯哼。Actually, personally, I actually don't mind being not sophisticated because that is just the right tone, I think, for the film. But uh, when I was writing the script, uh, till the point that at this particular plot line that they uh, the two characters, the male lead and the female lead, they went to uh, this particular space to, to practice shooting a gun. And um, the female character told the male character, because this is right in front of the, the backdrop, is a volcan volcano uh, where they actually uh, practice shooting the gun. And the female character said that Ash especially volcano ash or volcanic ash is the purest substance because of the temperature the substance uh, is incinerated at. So I thought that this would be a great title for English, uh, for the film, so that that's the reason why I used, uh, used Ash is Pure is White as the English title for the film. Uh, 呃，就是就是，呃，人就像炮炮灰这么说，就是像炮灰一样就烟消云散了。呃，但我觉得每个人都是尊贵的吧，即使是炮灰。
So uh, it's a very common phrase in China right now. It's called pao hui. The literal translation would be the edge of some kind of cannon uh, uh, weapon. So basically, it's talking about ash. And it's talk about how insignificant we are as you, uh, using this phrase. Pao hui means that how insignificant you are. But if you really think about it, you know we are that insignificant because we ended up will be just like ash being scattered around and just, uh, you know, in the whole uh, universe that we are that insignificant. Okay. So um, the other thing about this film and the time frame is that it starts in 2001 and goes until more or less the present day. So it kind of overlaps with most of your filmmaking um, career. And I think what this film does is, besides looking at Chinese society in this period, it also allows you to look back at your own work um, the beginning of the film is maybe a bit reminiscent of the setting of Unknown Pleasures, and then the middle of the film, you sort of revisit the setting of Still Life um, from, from more than 10 years ago. So I'm just curious about you know this this um, this revisiting your own work and whether that was like a, can you talk a little bit about that experience? Was did you take a certain kind of pleasure in going back and like recreating the world from your own films, you know, from several years ago? 就是这部片里面从两千零一年一直到现在那为什么会突然想到说会往以前拍过的这些片子把它当作素材然后透过这样子再利用的方式去拍出一部新的影片写完剧本之后呢就那个因为他是从这个从两千零一年讲到了这个当下当时写这个剧本的时候呢这个写完之后就跟这个美术指导在聊美术指导因为二零零一年首先是为什么想从二零零一年拍起因为我觉得 这个, 对我来说那是一个非常重要的时间 在之前就是经济是比较停滞的，这之后是经济快速的发展，啊，所以呃，同时它又是我经历的年代，所以我想从那个年代开始讲起。so, uh, as you mentioned, the film has started in 2001 until present time, and when I was writing a script three years ago in 2015, and uh, I intentionally uh, wants to want this film to start in 2001. The reason for it is because it is, it's a very important juncture um, or turning point in Chinese history. Not only it represents the, the first 17 years of the new millennium, but also it represents in the Chinese context the pre and post internet age, the economy from stagnation to dramatic growth, and also that those 17 years uh, are the years, or were the years that I actually am um, very familiar with. I grew up and I experienced uh, it firsthand. Uh,那么在写的时候呢,在空间的这个发生的这个地域的设计上, 呃,其实这个故事当然写到别的城市,别的地方也一样成立,因为中国每个地方都差不多。但是我在拍的时候,我就特别想重新回到大同,重新回到山峡去拍这个电影,发展这个电影,因为我觉得,我想就是 
，这个电影如果一个城市或者说一个地域，如果它是一个固定的舞台的话，啊、呃，就是过去我很多次的拍了山西啊、呃，拍了大同。也也两次拍到了三峡，如果再拍是第三次，啊，如果我我觉得我我特别需要这样的一个不变的舞台，因为这个舞台是不变的，这个空间是不变的，但是每部电影里出现的人是不同的，呃、啊，小五的时候是一个小偷，站台的时候是一个文工团，然后。呃，三峡好人是一个矿工，一个护士，到天注定是一帮铤而走险的人，呃，就、呃、我喜欢这样的一个不变的舞台，因为它能呈现出命运的不同，呃，就是在同样一个地方有这样活着的，也有那样活着的人。So that was in terms of 2001. That is a very important temporal elements that I want to start with. That in terms of the spatial elements. I, you know, of course, you can really put the stories anywhere in China. But to me, uh, the reason why I want to revisit uh, Datong in Shanxi Province and the Three Gorges um, in Sichuan, Chongqing, and the reason for it is because I really see these uh, these locations as the stages that I put actors and actors uh, actresses in. And for me, it almost as if that the stage is the same, but the people who are acting. On stage, they are constantly changing. For example, uh, in pickpocket, you have a thief, a pickpocket, and for platform, you have the, the touring troops, and then for still life, you have miners and you have nurses, uh, a miner and a nurse on stage, and then for uh, a touch of sin, you have a group of people who are really trying to rebel against the society and take on a very, very dangerous route. So I do think that uh, the reason why I want to revisit, revisit these locales or locations is because I see them as the constant stage that you see how life play out in China. Uh, because the story starts from 2001, 呃，我一开始工作的时候就跟美术指导，我们对那个年代有不同的记忆。呃，美术指导问了我一个问题，说：“你觉得两千零一年的时候女孩子染不染头发？”我说：“好像染吧。”他说：“不染。”然后我们俩聊了半天，我我我觉得好像不染，他觉得好像染，我我们俩完全晕了。然后正好从那个时候开始，零一年开始，我有了第一台 DV 的摄影机，拍了很多纪录片，一直拍到一零年。然后我说，那我把那些老的素材打开，因为我从来没有剪辑过那些素材。我我我想那些素材，我想等七老八十了再处理它，呃，总得留点东西老了再没体力拍了就可以剪剪老的素材嘛，所以从来没动过。所以，呃，为了为了美术，重新看那些素材，就看到了《三峡好人》，看到了任逍遥。然后我突然觉得，就我新写的《江湖儿女》里面的这个人物，呃，其实他就可以是《三峡好人》里的人物，也可以是任逍遥的里的人物，反过来也成立。然后我我当时特别开心，因为我觉得过去，比如说任逍遥里，巧巧跟这个。她的男朋友这条线没有展开说，当时很多人说导演你为什么这两个人，为什么他的故事不讲啊？因为他的故事这个电影的故事主要是两个十九岁的年轻人的故事，啊，我说这是我们中国话留白的手法，然后然后那个就有记者说，嗯，你你你那那是白，什么都没有，然后我觉得嗯，这个白其实东西很多，他就是江湖儿女啊。呃，所以就让赵涛跟斌哥穿了那个年代的衣服，同样一个造造型，把名字都改过来了。原来第一稿剧本里名字不叫斌斌斌哥跟巧巧的。嗯。So, in terms of looking at the beginning point of the film, 2001, I was collaborating with my art director. And we want to make sure that it really conveyed the sense of time and what's going on in 2001. And we had this discussion about whether or not, uh, based on our memory, girls at the time, did they dye their hair? And we had this ongoing uh, discussions about and debates about whether or not they 
did dye their hair at the time or they didn't dye their hair. Sometimes I think that they did and sometimes he thinks that they did. So it's sort of back and forth and I realized that the only way that I can actually settle this particular debate is to look into the, uh, the footage that I shot actually using my first DV camera in 2001. I actually, as a habit, I will just take that camera and then just randomly shoot, um, randomly shot different peoples in different spaces, public spaces, and I uh, did that from 2001 all the way to 2010. So I went back to those, uh, the documentary footage and trying to look into what's going on at the time in 2001. And this is something I, I didn't think that I'm gonna do in my 40s because I thought that I can always do it um, you know, with all these materials, I can just cut and edit them and then make them into a film later on when I'm, I cannot and have no energy to actually shoot films, maybe when, I was, when I'm in my 70s or 80s. But because of this particular discussion we had, I went into a lot of materials and a lot of footage and also a lot of edit out scenes from my previous films. And just so happened that the two things that I saw that really um, moved me and touched me a lot were the, uh, the, the images from Unknown Pleasure, Pleasure and also the images from Still Life. And I thought that because a lot of people in the past when they watched Unknown Pleasure, they always asked me why is that the, the two younger characters between Chow Chow and Binga, so these are the two main characters, the young characters in uh, Unknown Pleasure. And at the time they were 19 and I didn't actually elaborate on, uh, in terms of this particular plot line, I didn't really develop it. And I joke about it and I say that because I intentionally trying to leave it blank, almost like the Chinese landscape painting that you have that blank space everywhere. But people then will say that, well, it's not leaving it blank, it's just completely nothing there. So I thought that it might be a good idea to actually use that the, uh, to, to fill the gap or somehow to <clears throat> fill in the void by creating characters uh, based on these two uh, characters from uh, the developed characters for Ashes Pure as White based on these two characters that are not being explored a lot within the film uh, Unknown Pleasure. And I even, because the original script, the names for these two characters in Ashes Pure as White, and they weren't even Chow Chow and Binga, but after my research and after I found the connections, I changed their names to Chow Chow and Binga as well. Uh, uh,就是特别乱。呃,有用这种DV拍的,然后DV升级了之后,这个到了HDDV拍的,又,也有用几十六毫米拍的,三十五毫米拍的。后来用相机拍的,五D拍的,也有用这个,这个,这个艾丽
uh, for the first time and collaborate uh, for the first time, Eric Gautier. And um, we, he really likes the idea of uh, using different cameras or different equipments or different mediums to represent different times and within these six, uh, 17 years time span. And he asked me whether or not I like the, in terms of the gradation to be very sharp or to be very, very gradual. And uh, I told him that I like it to be very, very gradual just because it's like the same way that we live our life that you uh, don't really notice those changes. And it's almost like fish in the water uh, that you don't really notice uh, the, the changes, even though it's very, very dramatic, you don't really take notice of them. So that's the reason why I, I chose to use this particular gradual approach in terms of images, in terms of visual components, and using different, uh, six different cameras. So I was also talking about a joke. We had a show for 300 people, and we had about 200 employees. 然后大家围着一台DV在工作。那些群众演员不高兴了,说你们骗人,哪有拍电影拿这个拍的呀。觉得我们是骗子。So <笑> one particular scene is that we actually have about 300 extras with 200 staffs, and then we have all the staff with this mini DV camera with them shooting this particular scene. And these extras actually they got very upset because they thought that they'd been cheated or been lied to because what kind of director will use this type of mini DV camera uh, to shoot a film? Mm,呃,大家如果看了电影,有一场特别有意思,就是有一场是这个乔赵涛演的这个女主角,她跟男主角分手之后,她看一个呃,演出,舞台上在唱,唱一个歌叫有多少爱可以重来,舞台上的那
，就是最近的这三部片里面，就比较有类型片的这样的一个影子，透过不同的传统的类型片，像是犯罪性的传啊，或者是黑帮的这种类型片，或者是文艺片的这种类型片。那尤其是啊，江湖儿女感觉上就比较像是三零年代那时候飞木派那种什么文艺片的这样子的感觉呈现出来。那对他来说啊、呃，对我来说就是啊、呃、，Dennis 来说是这部片其实是您所有片子里面最。好笑也是最感伤的一部片，然后啊、呃，当然啊，陶、呃、赵涛也是在里面表现非常非常杰出。怎么会突然想到说，从以前的这样子啊、呃，从现实面以写实的方式啊、呃、去描述或者去构筑您的故事，那怎么会现在会往比较像片类型片的这呃类型片的这样的一个方向走？呃，一方面是我非常喜欢类型电影啊。呃呃，这方面，呃，我从呃一三年拍《天注定》开始，我觉得，呃，我也不知道是为什么，我总觉得类型片它有一种，呃，它能够建立起一种我们跟这个过去过跟历史的一种衔接，呃，这种衔接是因为因为类型元素，呃，在当下有新的。呃，新的发展在当下有新的表形态呢，还是还是什么原因？我一时也不太清楚，我也搞不明白。但是我我最近这几年想讲的故事，总会让我就是就是想到借用类型的方法。So in terms of the genre films, I do think that a starting in a, a touch, starting with the film A Touch of Sin, I start to realize that actually. By、uh, relating to or by making a connection with the the genre films, I somehow am I am continuing certain traditions that I can actually、um, make myself as one of the many elements of this particular long history of genre films. And I don't know why this kind of going back to history and trying to connect with history, including the film history within the genre. Uh, films、uh, is something that is so important to me at this point. But I do think that this is、uh, something、uh, that I want to do to somehow connect with that particular genre history. But at the same time, trying to find something new, a, a different way to、uh, tell a story. And that's the reason why I, I use、uh, the genre films as the, the raw materials、uh, as a template to really develop new stories. 呃，你比如说，在一三年拍《天注定》的时候，呃，这个故事的原型是四个真实的人物、真实的新闻。我在我在看这四个故事、看他们真实的案件的时候，他让我想起了，比如说想起了《水浒传》，呃，里面的人物，让我想起了胡胡金铨电影里面的人物。所以我在。我我觉得就是这种命运，呃，就是在过去古代的小说跟反映古代的类型电影里面才能出现的人物，他突然出现在现实生活里，呃，他让我觉得，呃，我想表现他，他是当下的生活，但是他跟过去我们的类型电影、过去我们的武侠片所承接的这个历史是一脉相承的，所以我就借用了武侠片的方法。For example, for a touch of sin. It's actually based on true story, true events, true individuals、uh, happens in、uh, in China and the, the violence act that they actually、um, act out in that particular historical context. And these people actually reminds me remind me a lot of a lot of literatures and film. Uh, the genre films that I have watched in the past, literature-wise, could be the tale of the water margin. And for King Hu's film, the Hu Xia genre films, I do think that、uh, these people embody that type of Hu、uh, Xia Jiang Hu、uh, element, and I th think that it's very interesting to actually tell a story that happens here and now in China by connecting these people and the stories with this long line of histories of the genre film, the Hu Xia genre, or the. Um, yes, the、uh, literary genre of、uh, wuxia as a way to make that historical con connections from the past all the way to present. 呃，那么到《江湖儿女》呢？呃，同样江湖人物在过去的电影里面
比较多的是呃三四十年代的上海。呃，或者七八十年代的香港，当时在当下的中国大陆，也一样有类似的人，呃，所以我觉得我应该借用江湖片的类型，来拍一个当下的中国大陆的故事。嗯、mm. ，So the characters that I developed within Ashes Pure White, you can even though that is here and now in China or the, for the past seventeen years, but you can see that these people reflect and somehow can can be connected to uh, the characters in the thirties and forties, the people in Shanghai or in the seventies, eighties, people in Hong Kong, and the films that are representing them. So I do think that that's the reason why I want to somehow use the the, the triad film. Triad films genre or the Jianghu or Wuxia genre as a way to somehow echo and to connect with those uh, genre films. Uh, so, actually, uh, for me, establishing such a connection will make me feel that human progress is slow. So, uh, by making these connections personally, uh, after making these connections, I realized that it will not. We are not changing that much as human being from the past till now. So this is also why in the Jianghu Girl, there will be a fade. And this is also one of the reasons why you will see the emergence and appearance of an UFO in the film. Because I think if we look at the world from outside, we are just a layer of cloud. But why do we keep on this cloud? 在这个世界上要这样斗啊斗，这个权力啊、利益啊，真的很无趣。Mm -hmm. So the reason why is because I do think that if from the perspective of the UFO or extraterrestrial, then when they look at human being as as a, as a, as, a, as a civilization, they might really see us just like. The ash or the dust I was talking about is so insi insignificant, and if we are so insignificant, why are we fighting each other so much? You know, for power, for fame, for money, and it's so uh, to me, it's something to think about. Um, we have to wrap up in like five minutes, which I think means we can take one audience question. <laughs> so, uh, yes. Yep, you. Yep, you have a microphone right there. Uh, 贾老师您好，呃、uh, ，我想问一下您，嗯、um, ，写剧本的过程是大样什么大体什么过程？什么样的东西会嗯、uh, 激发您有一个 idea 来写一个 movie？ 然后什么样？您比如说寻找素材的过程啊，还有整个是什么？ Okay, I'll translate my question. Uh, okay, uh, so I'm asking the director, uh, what's his process of writing? Uh, when does he initially have inspiration for a film, and uh, when, uh, how does he do his research and all this stuff? Thank you, Mr. Director. Thank you. Uh, uh, usually, I myself will first have a, uh, in the recent years. 呃，最近几年的电影都是先有一个人物形象，或者有几个人物形象是，这就是我特别想拍的人。呃，就是比如说《江湖儿女》，就是想拍江湖里的人，啊、呃，就男人、女人，啊、呃，想写他们，然后才有了故事。So in general, especially the the recent films, to me, the it's very very character driven. Which means that I always started with the characters that I want to have in these films, and then develop those characters. For Ashes Pure as White, I have these characters that I want to develop as the, the children of Jiang Hu, and based on these two main characters, then I branch out to all the the other uh, plot lines. Uh, I think we always say that when we make films, we need to find new people, uh, find new stories, or find new characters. 呃，对生活有新的感受，这些反映在什么地方呢？我自己越来越觉得，其实是能不能创造一个崭新的人物形象，因为在这个崭新的人物身上，他就具有这样的一些信息。
So people always think about, well, in terms of the script, you want to really know the characters, the, the stories, their life situations, their environments, and how they actually perceive and react to their living situations. But to me, the most important part and the starting point for everything for me personally is always the characters. 写完初稿之后呢就因为大概出现的空间场景都出来了我也会用电影中人物做的交通工具去走 So after I have my first draft, then uh, pretty much I know exactly the special, the spatial and the locales, or the spatial components and the locales will be pretty much set. And then based on that, I will then scout the locations for, for the film. And in the morning, and I will go scout uh, go scouting the uh, go. I will scout the location in the morning, and then at night I will then revise and modify the script. And this particular film, I travel quite a bit all the way from Shanxi Province to uh, the uh, Fengjie, which is uh, Shanxi Daotong, to Three Gorges, uh, the Fengjie, to all the way to Xinjiang, which means that I actually did it twice uh, for the whole scouting. Uh, process and each time will be about seven seventy seven hundred kilometers uh, for each round. So I travel a lot for this particular film and based on my research and then I will further develop my script accordingly. By the way, when I s went scouting for these locations, I actually took the transportations, the different means of transportations, just like the same way as the, just like the characters mm -hmm. in the film. 呃，其实电影里面的细节，呃，它，嗯，它，它其实也不是靠靠观，就是人们有时候会觉得是不是你很会观察生活啊，或者是你是不是你记忆力很好啊，很多事情都能记住，其实都不是，电影中的细节其实